that we're does doing Roman numeral hubs. But um, being a former teacher, I better not see any of those iPhones or any of those things because they'll be. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go back to my teacher mode. Yes. I don't like that. Superiors go to I don't care. I just want your attention. I'm sort. <laughs> Uh, before we actually start, I want to share this thing from um, the Hidden Messages with Water. This is a Japanese scientist. He's now on the other side. He died a couple of years ago, but he left a wonderful work behind. He became fascinated with uh, water and the effects it has. And so what he would do is freeze water and then photograph the water crystals that the water formed. Okay, but this was the experiment that he did with it. They would take a beaker of water and they'd put a word on a piece of paper like gratitude and wrap it around the beaker. Okay, following that. Then they'd flash freeze the water and then he would take a photograph of the crystals. And I want you to see how water is affected. All right, this was one, we wrapped a piece of paper with words love and gratitude around a bottle of water. There is the crystal it formed. This is how water is affected. All right. This one is music. The one is a Mozart symphony, and the other is air on the G string by Mozart. In contrast, they also did some with rap music. They just had the water listen to it and then they took the photographs, all right? Um, then, okay, on this side was heavy metal music, right here. It didn't even form a crystal. You see it right here? No crystal. How okay. come? It doesn't like the, the music. I and mean, this is where you can see scientifically how stuff affects us. Yeah. And the same way with water just set in a room, like where there's been healing prayer or something positive happening. There is a reason I'm showing you this. <laughs> Number one, we are like 95% water, our bodies. And so we're affected by each other's words and the music we listen to. Okay, we're affected by all that. And we don't have anybody flash freezing us and taking pictures, <laughs> but this is what it would be like, okay? Now, this one, the top and bottom, uh, this was lake water before and after a, a Buddhist healing prayer. Because what do we do at the end of all these? We anoint you with our healing prayer? All right, the top one was the water before. It did not form a crystal. The bottom one is after a healing prayer. Now this is water, not even us human beings. Isn't that amazing? And after the healing prayer, it was able to form a crystal. Okay? Um, now I want to show you a couple of the do it and let's do it of how our words uh, affect. Okay. All right, this was the top one, they said to the water, let's do it, okay? The bottom one is, they just said, do it. All right, look at the difference. The top one where they said, let's do it, it forms that crystal. <laughs> sit up, sit up in your chair and you won't feel sleepy. I don't feel like No, no, I mean away from leaning back. You'll be more awake then. And... The bottom one on, was, when, it. was when they Let's said, when they said, do it, <laughs> okay? Tell them to do it. Let's do it. No, I want you to pour water crystals. <laughs> but do you see the difference? Isn't that amazing? This water crystal here is I'm sorry. They put the words I'm sorry on it. Look at the, the crystal. I'm sorry. Why would you say this water? Hearing, hearing them say this or something? That's all they're doing. He, he gets a beaker of water. And they print the words on it and put it around the and put it around the beaker and then he flash freezes it and then photographs it. This is another what is a flash freeze like really fast. Yeah. A fast to be real high temperatures. I guess that's just all right, here's one wisdom. They put the word wisdom around it in Japanese, English, and German. 
And over here, on the other side, this top crystal is your cute. And the bottom one that doesn't even form a crystal is you fool. Look how we're affected by words. The bottom one, they have put your, your fool on it, didn't even form a crystal. Top one, you're cute. And these three beautiful crystals are wisdom in three different languages. Isn't that fascinating? And it's just all scientific. Okay? Um, then the last one. Uh, this is he had children talk to the water. Uh, when the children said you're beautiful is the top one, uh, the middle one also, and the bottom one is when the water was ignored. Now look at the difference. The top two are the children saying you're beautiful to the water, and when the water is ignored, look, it doesn't form a crystal. That bottom one is when the water was ignored. I mean, this is just amazing to me, and this is just water. But we are 95% water. <laughs> okay? So, and remember I showed you the one, uh, anyway, this is fascinating if any of you want to look at it after, but like before and after the healing prayer. You know? In college, we set out eight different things with the same soil, tomato plants like that, uh -huh. eight different channels. The hard music stuff, the plants didn't grow, they died. Yeah. It wasn't like hard rock yet. But the, the others, there were certain ones where they just took off. Now there you can see there's, there's stuff going through it. How does the energy from pieces of paper get into the people? And I asked Dr. Dispenza that, he said it is the person that wrote it that put the energy into the paper. That's his thing. But he said it wouldn't know. Yeah. Because the words are different from different languages. Anyway. So the other side of this practical for us is being in a group like this, doing something positive, just your being here is affecting a change. Because all that water had was a word exposed to it, okay? <laughs> or the healing prayer, and you see the difference, you know, that it made. So I want to start with the check-in. Do you all have your nitroglycerin sheets? Well, I know a month is a long time ago. But last time, you all really were on top of it. But if you're not, you know, we're human. We'll get reminded. So uh, tell me how you did with your nitroglycerin sheet. Ken, you want to start? Well, mine's not in my pocket anymore, so I guess it got used. Um, it, mine was... Um, but you carried it around. Yeah. Uh, God loves me just the way I am. All right. Excellent. And, uh, that's a good reminder. Mine's at home on a countertop. Okay, and you're looking at it every day and saying it? All right. Are you also seeing how important words are? And even just carrying them on you is having a good effect, but it's better if you're also saying them because what we think and what we say is what gets realized. Quantum physics is showing that. How about yours? <coughs> Mine was laying on the kitchen table. I couldn't tell you if it's still there. She probably might do it away. So what would be a better place for it? Well, that was a good place for it, but... Did you ask her to leave it there? <laughs> well, maybe find another place or, uh, you know, hook it up with some tape or a magnet or something. How about you? Okay, well, you're going to get a new one today. <laughs> All right, and do you say it when you look in the mirror? Not every day, but a lot more time. Okay. Just two, three times a week. All right, we'll make it daily. How about yours? All right, did you take it out and say it or read it? <coughs> Those are powerful <laughs> words. And what we confess is what we possess. Okay, yours? Come out right here in my hand. Okay, you carry it on you? Yes, ma'am. You know, I think this is just, you all should get purple hearts or something. I mean, to hold on to something for a month, I think that's just outstanding. How about yours? It's in my wallet. And do you pull it out of your wallet or read it? When I look at the phone, here. You come across it and you remember to say it. And yeah, he's giving up smoking, isn't that great? Wow. <laughs> oh, I thought you had <laughs> You told me you were. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> yeah, but both of you. You're both going to be Navy SEALs. That's why you were down to three cigarettes a day. <laughs> okay, what was yours? I, uh, Navy SEALs. I carried it in my wallet for a long time, but then I shared it with my son uh, about three weeks ago, and I guess. I didn't put it back in my wallet, so he got it in his He's wallet. Okay. Well. That'd be he great if he had it. <laughs> and use it, Simon. In your wallet, you ever look at it? Excellent. Oh, that's great. Okay, see? Uh huh. Oh, you got both of them. All right. Next, he 
fighting area. <laughs> yeah. I uh, figured out last night to bring it in this morning, but I left it on my dresser. But have you been using it oh, in yes. the month? Yes. That's what counts. Oh, yes. Great, great. I have a point. Okay, well, you're about to get a new one. <laughs> you didn't ask me. Excuse me, I didn't do the next. Oh, and Lalo said, oh, wait, well, the three of you yeah, right here. I've got my second row. Whoa. I'm trying to at home on my kitchen table. And you read it every day? I just read it last week, but I didn't get to. I mean, okay, we're going to try to work up to a daily. I'll try, but I've been working a while. Okay, have it somewhere where your eyes you fall on it. Yeah. Laos? I have my wallet the whole time. And you pull out your wallet and read it every day? Not every day, sometimes. Okay, maybe a different place so it comes daily. Joe? Visor. Okay, I have yeah, it under the, it the, the um, garage door opener, so I see it all. <laughs> you know, I, I really do love it a lot. All right, excellent. All right, pass them around, and you can um, write it on your uh, same one, or you can have this new one. What's that? The whole stack? There you go. Now, if we focus on one, we're, we're in better, better shape. Anybody need a pen? Yes, sir. Yes. And I want you to be open for when we um, read these that a new one might strike you because our soul is constantly changing and growing. So there might be a different one or it might be the same one. Just trust. And Sister has prayer things just seven, eight minutes away from here at one o'clock on, when do we meet, on Tuesdays? Uh, first Tuesday of the month at night and no, third, the one Wednesday, that's here. third Wednesday at one o'clock. Third Wednesday at one o'clock right here at the public library. They're 90 minutes long. You can be in and out. Simon, you got one? They're coming around. Here you go. All right. Then we have a bonus one on the fourth. What is it, the fourth Monday? The last Monday, last Monday of November. 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 Yes, yes. Everyone has one of these? All right. <laughs> I put up brackets. Some of them are red and some are black, depending on. Uh, is Everett here? Right there. This is Everett. You may as well use your own copy. Okay. There we go. <laughs> anyway, I marked the, the part that's the uh, what we write on your nitroglycerin. But let's just whip around and read these because, again, as we see the power of words, you can see how the water is changed. We are changed just by reading and hearing and doing these, okay? So, Everett, you want to start reading? Where? On the back to basics at the top. Trust. Trust? No, at the top. Yeah. That's, that's not the trust. trust is the first. Oh, I'm sorry, it is. <laughs> Oh, well, what can I say? Trust. Go. <laughs> Have you ever had one of these days when you didn't think a thing could go your way? You want to keep on? Sure. On these days, there can be a sense of discouragement, maybe even a thought of why me. Okay, go on. Maybe we each do two sentences each. Ready? Uh-huh. Uh, whenever this happens, stop. Oh. What no, you doing? LeBron. I'm saying everybody needs two sentences. Whenever this happens, stop what you're what you're doing and stand in the trust and the truth of your being by affirming. You get a second sentence. I am. I am the beloved of God. All right. Next person, two sentences. I know that. Uh, I know that. I know that what I think about, I bring about. I trust that I am. Prosperous, successful, and downright fantastic. All right, moving to the next one. Like that there. I trust that I am guided to to experience only the highest and best for me. And as we're reading these, just be listening to your soul inside to which one you should write down for this week. It might be the same one. It might be a different one. Okay. The next sentence. Every now and then, we may have the experience of feeling lonely. Next. You may feel we are all alone and no one loves us. But there is no one for us to love. Get another sentence. Um, the next one. Know you are surrounded by an infinite love that wants only the best for you. Okay, that is just so important if we can mm -hmm. get that into our souls. All right, next person. And this feeling affirmed. 
the second sentence. I am beloved by made manifest. All right. Next. As I love life, life loves me back in a remarkable way. I love I am attracts to attracts to me wonderful love and experience and some people. Okay. <clears throat> Next. I love my life. It's such a blessing. <coughs> And see, those are such powerful words, so it is, because when we say that, it makes it present, just like the words in the water. Okay, going on to the next one. Important? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Laughs or knees. I hope it's life or death. Okay, go ahead. Grace feels surrender. Life can seems horrific. Yeah. At times. And we can't get caught up in all the doing best. Mm -hmm. It's made up words. Yeah. But sometimes we simply need to surrender to the flow of life and allow things to just be. All right, next. I surrender to all the good of my life. I know I have enough time to complete whatever tasks are in front of me. I surrender to the grace that guides me to the peace that surpasses all understanding. Mm. There's right. only one, simply a burn. All right, let's all read this one together. There, there is, is only one light. That, that light is God's light. That, that life is perfect. That, that life is my life, life now. I am, I am divinely and completely supported in all I do. I not only live the life of God, I am the life of God, and all is well. All right, choose what sentence is yours for your nitroglycerin for the week. Like the brackets. The bracket part, yes. The ones that have the brackets, because the other is just kind of a commentary. But these are the what you'll confess and say. So on your sheet of paper, get your nitroglycerin for this week. And it might be the same, but because we're constantly moving and changing, it could also be different. You got yours already? Yeah. All right. Children, I mean, you're welcome to have them, but if not, I'll just collect them and we'll use them again next time. But you're welcome to take them home and share it with someone else. I'll have each of you read aloud the one that you feel is yours for this week. And see, we get that inner guidance. We all have the divine inside us guiding us. And it's just a matter of learning how to listen. Like this morning, I was headed for Mass over at a presentation. And as I'm driving down the street, because I had a 9 o'clock appointment, so I knew my exercise time would be tight. So it's like, well, just check out uh, All Souls. They have something at 7.30. So I went by, and sure enough, I got there just in time for communion. And it was like listening to that inner voice, and so I went a different direction instead of where I was planning. But the more we do that, the more guidance we'll get. Because there's a perfect plan for each of our lives. Not just that some people have it. No, we all have it. Okay? All right, so let's start. Let's see. You read last, right? Yeah. So Ken, you want to read yours? Um. I am the love of God made manifest. Joe? Infinite love what's only the best for me. Um, I'll allow you go ahead and write yours and then we'll come back to you. Are you ready? Not quite. Mm -hmm. Let's go together. I surrender to all the good of my life. That's, you can realize how much good we're just opening ourselves to. That's what's so wonderful. Yes. Next. Uh, I love my life. It is such a blessing, that's so it is. Ooh, that's really anchoring it. Yes, Steve? I surrender to all the good in my life. Mm. I know I <coughs> have enough time to complete whatever tasks 
are from the wing. Mm, what a mind time. Right? I know that what I think about, I bring about. Mm. That's the power of all of this. And that's why having it where you see it every day, because what you think about, you bring about. Okay, yours? There is only one life. And would you add on, and that life is mine. Yeah, okay, you got it written on your sheet? Yeah. Okay, good. Because I you can, great. Because that's the important part. Because we weren't taught that growing up. We were often taught we were bad or something. And we've got to get to the truth. Okay? Yeah, uh, yes. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> so who See? copied off who? <laughs> uh, you're both listening to your inner guidance. Uh, I surrender to all the good of my life. Ah, this is interesting. A number of you. That's so wonderful. So be expecting and watch for it now, you know. There is only one life that is God's life. <laughs> life that that life is my life. There, that's the important part that we've got to realize. God, the only way God can be present is our world is in us. There's no other way. Okay? I surrender to all the good of my life. Ah, there we go. That was what I picked for last time. Okay. And sometimes I, it's the same because the Spirit wants us to get something. Mm -hmm. I am the love of God made manifest. Mm, good, that was the same, right? Did you have that last time too? No, I didn't. No, you had a different one. Somebody else had one. Yeah, that's, that's it. God's only chance. Okay. Are you ready for me? I'm ready for you. The love I am attracts me to wonderful love and experiences and people I love, right? That's what I'm for. All right. Good. Alice, you got yours? I am the beloved of God. Wonderful. That's excellent. Okay, so I'm going to have you stand now and we'll do. Uh, yeah, I got everybody, right? Yes, ma'am. Sign that I don't remember signing. Send me the phone. You found the phone? Yeah. I thought he would. No, let it go. He got Lance to go. I don't know. I know. We're going to check on it? Yeah. Okay. I'll check it. Okay. we got to get this done. All right, let's stand up for our song that was given just for you all. So take a stretch first. You want to make a noise? Oh! Okay, grateful for this day. Uh, all of us have our limbs. None of us have, you know, artificial legs because they were blown off over in the war. We have a place. You have work. You have all these good gifts. We get that. So this is the day. And then the second one is this is the job the Lord has made because I've heard over and over your gratitude for this job, and I have never. In my lifetime, experience the boss who is as generous with workers as Joe. And I don't know if you all realize that. Oh my gosh. Whew. Just that January party is beyond the beyond. Okay. <laughs> to say nothing of the float trip and everything else. And then uh, the last one, this is the boy. Since we don't have any girls here today, I'll say girl. Anyway, this is the boy the Lord has made because the inner child is at the root. And so. The more we can get in touch and love who you were as a little boy, even if people around you weren't giving, giving you the feedback you needed, it doesn't change who you are. Okay? Now we're going to clap because that creates energy. All right, gang. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be happy. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the job, this is the job that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. 
we, we tend to judge everything we do, think, say, harshly by others' standards. Nothing is good enough. Okay? And what was your behavior you decided on? Well, we had decided that uh, we wasn't going to let, uh, we had talked about not letting other people's, you know, we set our own standards. Okay. Did but you do that this month? I can honestly say I didn't. I didn't. I forgot all about it. Okay. All right. <laughs> so uh, we probably need, do you want a second nitroglycerin sheet just to be like a little reminder? I, Would I that will, help? Or? I'll put it on the back. Oh, that's even better because then you've got both of, oh, excellent, both on one sheet. Yeah. And he's so, going to see Birdman tomorrow. So okay. that would definitely help. Okay. So write, write what you'd like to do, you know, a change of behavior on that, because that'll remind you of it. Simon? Mm -hmm. Which was yours that you picked and what behavior to correct it? The last time? Really? Yes. For you? Uh -huh. uh, I think, uh, I think mm -hmm. we tend to worry here how others may respond to our feelings. And that was mine. Okay. And what did you do for you? You had to do some behavior to counteract that? Okay, have you got today's, I think you were gone when we wrote down your nitroglycerin for today. Mm -hmm. Did you write it down? I, I still like my I love my life. All right, so write that down, and then on the back of it, write something about that, so it'll be a reminder to make a change of behavior, okay? All right, um, Lionel, oh, you said you can't remember even doing this right. last time. Okay. Chris, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We tend to put others once and these before our own. And what did you decide to do about that? Put myself first. And did you do that once this month? Pretty much all of them. Did you? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> How'd that feel? Good. That's what I'm doing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and see, it, this is this happy medium between not selfishness, because, you know, that could be interpreted. But if we are caring for ourselves, we are not going to be so testy and mean with other people. If we take care of our needs, then we'll be more willing to be loving and kind and helpful to others. And if we're not taking care of ourselves, we're going to get resentful and angry and, uh, and then somebody's going to pay. They'll pay. <coughs> okay. Yours? Uh, others' actions slash attitudes. Okay, so what did you determine to do? Do you remember? Because you all did it in twos. You know, you talked yeah. with somebody and to come up with something. on the back of your nitroglycerin about that, you could, you know, just, it's just to call this stuff to mind. It, it helps start changing. Okay, yours? Uh, uh, we are st steadfastly loyal even when it's unjustified or harmful for uh, us. What yeah. was your result? Uh, we just basically evaluate situations or relationships and, you know, cut the losses that need. Okay. Did you do any this month? Did you cut any this month? I do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a famous quote, um, and I can't remember, it's some uh, actress, or maybe it was Maya Angelou, that when people show you who, you, who they are, believe it. <laughs> okay, next one. Uh, we tend to put others once and these before. Uh, it's like a, it's just a home. And did you do something with that this month? Yeah, yeah. Did you get yourself in there someplace? Yeah, well, uh, the other day was my birthday, and uh, uh. I took, uh, instead of money, I took my mother out to dinner, so I kind of worried about her, her feelings, too, you know what I'm saying? As far as, it was my birthday, but I wanted to share that with her. Okay. Well, she had something to do with it. <laughs> right, she sure did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she sure but that was a way of honoring yourself. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. It's always, it's much better than feeling sorry for ourselves because nobody's throwing a party. Throw your own party. <laughs> Okay, yours? We tend to worry for how others may respond, respond to our feelings. And did you have a behavior change this month on that? Did you try it somewhere? Yes, I did. 
and tell us about it. I try not to worry about things too much. Okay. Only the important things that I worry about. All right. Paul? Uh, really the same thing. Uh, we tend to worry for how others may respond to our feelings. Mm -hmm. I didn't do nothing. You didn't do? So how about writing it on the back of your nitroglycerin sheet? Okay, so that would be a reminder. Uh, Ken? Um, I had the same thing. We tend to worry, fear, how others may respond to our feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and I really didn't, um, I don't remember doing anything about that. This okay, month. maybe the same thing on the back of your nitroglycerin yeah. sheet, write something about okay. that to honor yours. Joe? Uh, same as Chris, to put others' wants and needs for Elm. Specifically, I changed the Thursday saying you cannot ask me for something on Thursday. It has to be 24 hours in advance. And I made this a place of safety for me. Okay. If I come in and there's negativity and all, I just leave. Mm -hmm. I just get out of here. Now, it's interesting because um, I had this Birdman talk with the, the Sugar Fire Grill and he gave me this little thing of meat. And I was coming back here and I said, you know what, I could just bring it home. Then that evening, Grania took a piece. I said, wait a minute. Ah. That was mine. I would gladly give it to you if you asked me for it. Good. But that's new for me. There's a practical that really application. That's a good practical application of it. Because I feel yep. so selfish. I thought Legrand and Tom would enjoy that, and it was so hard not to do it. But we'll find again that they, there's a thing in the codependent book, Vitality Baby. Well nurtured, taking care of people are a delight to the universe. Because we're going to be, when we're taking care of them, we're going to be more kind and loving to others. And if not, we're going to be, ah, resentful. Klaus, what was yours? We don't know what the feelings just are, and it is better to share them than to deny, minimize, justify them. So what was your behavior to change that? Mm, just when I uh, get something stuck or I'm happy, I'm happy I just uh, buy something that uh, make other people laugh or say some stupid thing. But that's going to other people. What are you doing about yourself, feeling your feelings? Yeah, that's up to me. To make me feel a better too. You probably the joy of Okay, yeah. all right. I had uh, the same thing every had when we had a steadfast and loyal and it was uh, unjustified uh, and uh, harmful for us. Did you cut or do anything this month where there yeah, was that happening? I had a couple of them. You did? Wow, that's good progress. <laughs> yeah. All right, huge, huge. Okay. All right, so today we're going to look at the other side, which are codependent characteristics. But before we do that, I brought another show and tell in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not an angel this time. Do we have a different one today? <coughs> it's a Yahoo account. And really. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what trash bags or these are rags are the things that wrapped us up? And so when you would look at this, you would just think what? Scraps. Scraps. Anything else? Something valuable? Hmm? Does it look like something valuable? No. Nope. No. This would get, if it were just like this, it'd probably get swept up and thrown in a trash can. Now, what's tragic is a lot of us picked up feelings and perceptions like that when we were little. Not because somebody like our parents wanted to do that, but if they were wounded and they never dealt with their codependency and their woundedness, which they didn't because there wasn't that much around. I remember my mom went to one uh, al -Anon meeting in Custer, South Dakota. Nobody showed up, so she never went again. So we kept suffering the effects of our dad's alcoholism, you know. But it doesn't change what happens to us. Do you all have that? Okay? It's like if I'm walking through and at the same time, let's say, you get up and you happen to hit my leg and break my leg. Because you're strong. All right? Now, it's not that he meant to break my leg, right? 
But I still have a broken leg. And if I don't do something about it, I'm not going to be able to walk, correct? And that's what it is. We're not about blaming. Everybody, I think, does the best they can, but they're wounded. But we have the opportunity to be more conscious and make some changes. And so we want to fix the leg. We don't want to spend energy blaming and fe No, we just want to fix it. And that's why we're becoming aware of these codependent behaviors and characteristics, OK? Because that's what wrapped us up and made us think sometimes that we are like junk or throwaway or not good enough. <coughs> that's why we think our needs, we have to take care of everybody else and we can't have needs. Yes, we can. Or we think we've got to just please everybody else and not have our own feelings. It's because we learned that real early in life. But unless somebody changes, it's going to keep being repeated. So if you want to do something for your children, your grandchildren, and our world, <laughs> every change we make, just like one word, makes a difference in whether a crystal comes out or a blob. And it's the same way in our lives, even more powerfully so, okay? So, what do you think is all wrapped up here that looks so useless? Well, I'm going to go around and have you read one characteristic for each, <laughs> each wrapping. I'll make, do it two characteristics, okay? <coughs> all right, let's see. I started here last time. How about I start over here, Ken? Would you like to read the first? And even this great giant pin. I mean, this stuff sticks to us. All right? But it's not an excuse to be that way. We need to get to the truth. That's why our soul is here on earth, so we can learn that truth. Otherwise, we'll be back for another round to try and learn it. <laughs> okay, read the first two characteristics, please. Um, my feeling good about who I am stems from being liked by you. You see that? And I am good whether you like me or not. Did you all say yes, sir, yes, ma'am, something? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, I should have been a Baptist. <laughs> no, I really should have. I, somehow I landed in the wrong religion. Okay. You can convert. And the second one? Feeling good about me stems from my receiving approval from you. Again. And so if you don't approve me, then I'm not okay. Do you see how, how tenuous our life is? But that is how we live. Why? Because a little boy... A little girl, me, a little boy, is very dependent because mom and dad are like these six-foot giants. And if I don't please them or get their approval, I'm liable to get, I see awful stuff happening to kids. Okay, I, I get spanked, I get this, I won't be liked, whatever it is. And so that learn, that gets learned in us. And as adults, we have to unlearn it. So there's the first rag, wrapping this up. Okay, go ahead. Oh, wait a minute, I did over here. Paul? Okay. Next rag. A couple this, more characteristics. This struggle affects my serenity. My mental attention focuses on solving a problem or relieving your pain. My now, okay, is that all one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, excuse me, let's finish it. My, my, my mental attention is focused on pleasing you. All right. Now, if somebody else is struggling, that's their struggle. We can't fix and change other people. We can only do ourselves, okay? And so if I'm focusing all of it on solving the other person's, guess whose problems I'm not solving? Mine. And these are the only ones I can change and solve. All right? More rights. Go ahead, the next two. We tend to worry, fear, how others may respond to our feelings. We tend to put others down. Other side. We're on the characteristics. <coughs> and by the way, as we're going along, you know at the end of this, I'm going to have you check your top three mm -hmm. and then your top one. So just be listening. Let spirit guide you. Which ones do you want to focus on? Okay? Go ahead. Okay, my mental attention is focused on protecting you. You see how this is, this is the, the whole thing around uh, codependency. It's all out here instead of lived in here. And of course, we can't control or change anybody out there, so it's useless, wasted activity. Go ahead. My mental attention is focused on manipulating, manipulating, yeah. manipulating you to get what I need or to do in my work. 
And as children, that's one of the things we learned. We learned to manipulate to get what we needed. And it doesn't respect other people's freedom or respect them or ourselves. It's more rags that got wrapped around us. Okay, next ones. My self-esteem is boasted by solving your problem. You see what the problem with that is? If I can't solve your problem, then I don't have any self-esteem. Do you see how crazy that is? I am who I am. It isn't dependent on solving your problem because actually you're the only one who can anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. My self-esteem is bolstered by relieving your pain. Same thing again. It's making my worth <laughs> depend on what I do for you. That's not true. But again, you see how these got formed in childhood. My, uh, my own interests and hobbies are put aside. My time is spent sharing your interests and hobbies. Now, what do you suppose happens if you do that long enough? You keep putting you know, everything you yours aside for this other want. person, huh? You don't get to enjoy none, uh, any of the things that you want to do or even experience them. Maybe. And what's going to happen eventually in you? Come get it. Oh, man, and that other person is going to pay. <laughs> you know what? And what, what sometimes happens is we always go to every movie you want to go to. But guess what? Every time the person asks you what movie, you go, I don't know, whatever you want to do. <laughs> See? And then we turn it around and attack them. We never do anything. We never go to any movie I want to go to. We just go to movies you want to go to. Because as codependents, we didn't learn to get in touch with what do I like and want and say it. And that's where adults then uh, talk and arrive at something. Uh, with one friend, I'd go to one movie theater and she'd go to another because <laughs> we like such different movies. But there's ways to work it out, you know. Okay, go ahead. The next one. Uh, your, clothing, oh, yeah. your clothing and personal appearance are dictated by my desires as I feel you are a reflection of me. Woo! Like couples. Oh, couples, because you will project <coughs> your inner woman on some poor woman and want her to dress that way, and some woman will project <coughs> her inner man on you and want you to behave and dress a certain way. I watched this one night at Target's. Uh, they were looking at some men's clothing and all, or no, women's clothing, and all of a sudden I heard her yelling, you always want me to dress that way and that's not what I like. That's what's happening. Instead of being in touch, what do I like, and this is the way I am. Sandy, having enough confidence. Go ahead. Yeah. And again, there has to be guidance from adults, but they, each one is so different and that's part of what they have to, you know, walk through and be. Okay. Next one. Your behavior is dictated by my desires, as I feel you are a person. You see how all of this is about controlling other people. No wonder we run into conflict with each other, because we don't want to be controlled. Guess what? They don't either. <laughs> all right. Rags that got wrapped around us. Next two. I am not aware of how I feel. I am aware of how you feel. Do you see that? We are so focused on the other person, and that's what some of you had as your behavior changed, to get in touch with your own feelings, you know? Uh, there's, a, there's a codependent joke about um, having sex, and the joke is, it was good for you, how was it for me? <laughs> you see, we're so out of touch, we got out of touch of what we want. Oh, okay, the next one. <laughs> Too close to home. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm not aware of what I want. I ask you what you want. I'm not aware, I assume. See, that's that same thing, like what movie should we go to? But then down the road, it's going to keep building up anger, 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 and the other person will pay. And they'll go, well, I ask you every time, and you never, see? That's where we've got to get in touch with what we feel, what we want, and be able to express it, and then negotiate. Rags we got wrapped up in. I mean, this just happened to all of us. Nobody set out a course and said, this is what you're learning. We just absorbed it in what we lived in, okay? That's why somewhere along the line, somebody has to recover and change, because otherwise it just keeps going down the pipe. All right, next two. The dreams I have for the future are linked to you. There we go. See, I'll focus on somebody else again. It's not about me at all. And of course, you can't live my life. You've got to live yours. We don't know why each of us chose to come here on Earth. 
We've got to find that out and live it. Okay, next one. A fear of rejection determines what I say and do. Mm, that is a biggie. And again, you can see how that's rooted in the little child us. Because, boy, we so want mom and dad's approval and attention. And we just learn to bend ourselves all kinds of ways. But in doing that, we sell ourselves out. Do you remember how Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 coins? With that a Bible kiss. story? Does that with a kiss, out? right? What? With a kiss. And with a kiss, but it was he, he got paid 30 coins for it, you right. know. The, the kiss was just to show who to arrest. But we sell ourselves out for 30 coins all the time. Every time we do these behaviors, we're selling ourselves out. And guess what's happening inside? <laughs> And then somebody just has to step on my toe and ah, you know. And it's not about them, it's about what I've been suppressing. <laughs> All right, these are the rags that are wrapping this up. These are lovely rags. Okay, <laughs> next two. <laughs> we'll use them. And you can understand how a little boy you know, when you've got a big, angry, six-foot giant, that's where a lot of this gets instilled. And then it just keeps carrying over. The next one. I used giving. Wait a minute, did you read two? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I used giving as a way of feeling safe in our relationship. My social circles diminish as I involve myself with you. Because we're circling around one person, and every uh, domestic abuse case is always, if you read it, it's always it's usually the husband who has the wife, and they've been cut off, cut off, cut off. You know, it's a really dangerous situation. All right, Simon? I put my values aside in order to connect with you. Who are you selling out there? <coughs> Simon, who are oh, you selling so. out in that, huh? So. That's right. The third, you know, we, we, we see it in Jesus being betrayed and sold, but we've got to realize how we do it to ourselves. And of course, then we get mad at the other person, but we've done it. Okay, go ahead. I value your opinion and way of doing things more than my own. And why would you do that? I don't know why you would do that. Really? Keep peace. Anybody? Why would you want to do that? Keep the peace. Keep the peace? What else? Have your own feeling. Have some self worth. Uh, stay connected. You'll keep liking me if I do everything you want. But meantime, what's happening inside you? The what? It's just the the dirty feeling inside. It, anger. Anger is building because our inner being knows, wait a minute, I have rights to, okay? Even though my outer is trying to do all this to, to be liked, okay? Next one. I value your opinion and the way of doing things more than my own. What's happening there, Steve? Well, it could be that you feel that uh, the other person is more important than you are. Right? So who are you selling out again? Yourself. Yep, it's another sellout. And then the group or the other person doesn't have the gift of your particular insight. And that's what makes anything, it's all of us, we each have a different piece and we put it all together. It's like a company. Everybody's doing their piece. Then you have something successful. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important. All right, more rags. Oh, we're on the last rag. Ooh, the revelation is about to come. All right, last ones. <laughs> My quality of life is in relation to the quality of yours. Woo! Do you see what that is? What? Well, it's kind of still the same story. It's like you're valuing their feelings more than you are your own. Right. My quality of life has got to be in me, not about you. We're, see, we're li that's what codependency is. We're living everything out there, and we're not living in here. Okay, next one. I have to be needed to have a relationship with you. Okay, and there again, many of us develop that, and you as boys probably develop that with your mother, because boys have a very strong connection with mother. 
And when you marry a wife, guess what? That's the next mother. And so it can be continued that same way. Or you can be acting out the anger that you felt. You need to be aware. Be aware. All right, so the last rag of the characteristics. The diamond. Diamond is close. It is. Somebody, when I used, to, I used to go out to Massachusetts four times a year to do retreats. And so Sturbridge is a, a village that they've done where they reenact, they make their own shoes, they do everything there. And this was a thimble, but it's a silver one. But look at the thing on it. Yours to remember. Mm. Now, what I want to bring home is inside all of this that we got wrapped up in, is the real you who needs to be remembered. And that's no small thing, because we've lived in this so long, we think it's who we are, until you start becoming aware. And hopefully these sessions once a month are helping you become aware. It's like, wake up, okay? Wake up, because we can't change something until we realize it. To even re like the behaviors that you practice during the month. These are all getting our sailboat back on course, okay? So, would you put check marks <coughs> next to your top three characteristics? <coughs> you don't want to share with the group? No, I just said no, because it's, it's to myself. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. But we're, what I'm going to have you all do is the characteristic and the behavior no. you're going to do. Yes. That's all we're doing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Go. First. All right. Go. Uh, my mental attention is probably more pleasing than you. That's one person. Okay. And no, the number one. No, this is number one and what behavior you're going to do. Well, see, I haven't determined what I was going to do yet. That's what you guys were doing. Yeah, but. Yeah, we didn't figure it out. It's like, because my number one was my fear of rejection determines what I say and do. Okay. So, you know, that's kind of what. Okay. Well, okay, let's start. I'll let. Chris start, and maybe hearing others will give some ideas, and we'll come back. Okay, my, what's yours? My own interests and hobbies are put aside, my time is spent sharing your interests and hobbies. And the behavior's going to be? Uh, focus on what more makes me happy. All right, you got a specific person in mind? Couple. Okay, you need to have something specific, otherwise it'll be too airy-fairy. No, I'll talk about two people, couple. Okay, yeah, yeah, to be kind of figured out. Okay. So Joe or Lionel, who wants to go next? I go. All right. Mental attention is focused on pleasing you. What um, I've started doing is taking 24, 36, 48 hour breaks. So there's an actual thing of, of stop doing this for a specific time that wow. um, seems to be helping. That's very concrete. But we'll see. Great. Okay. Uh, well, mine was my fear of rejection in terms of what I said to do. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, I, I think of it was just, you know, just face it. You know, while we swallow them up and throw just you know, for whatever it is they're going for. Good for you. Uh, and if you are rejected, because people can say no, what are you going to say inside yourself? Um, I tried, or, you know. I want you to say, I am okay. Even if they don't like my idea or right. my plan. You see, we've got to get back to that. Their rejection does not define who I am. Other people can't define who I am. Okay? I'm still me, even if you don't like that idea. It doesn't change who I am. <laughs> so you want to get back to I am okay, even if they don't like the idea or whatever it is, whatever they reject it. Because, see, as children, we were so so you just can't imagine until you start getting in touch of how much we needed and wanted our parents' approval. And that does not die in us. Like, I, I think I told you all once, what started my inner healing was I was projecting my dad on my superior. Now, she wasn't even a man, but she was authority. And that's what dad is, okay? And, and so, you know, if she didn't smile at me, I'd be so sad. And if she didn't do this, oh, dear God. I mean, but it launched me. I got enough pain that it got me into my inner healing. It was about healing the child in me because my dad from the get-go said I wasn't his. I mean, that's a pretty big rejection, okay? But it can be overcome. And I'm evidence of it. 
Nobody can believe me that I call it my BC and AD life, you know. <laughs> Nobody can believe what I was like. I mean, I would no more you catch me dead standing in front of anybody talking or doing, oh my gosh, I would die. In our college, our president liked to call the young sisters up to give spontaneous talks, you know, in assemblies. And I always said, thank God she never called me up because they only had one dead nun. <laughs> I mean, I just, you can't believe, I would just die through those. And I apparently God wanted me to live because I never got called up, you know. But that's, that's where the change, because I thought I was no good inside. And that's what has to get changed, to know our worth and how loved we are. And where were you when this transformation started? Where was I? St. Matthias. And Matthias, where that you do that, that's right. Amazing. Yeah, my superior sister Jane, who became a very good friend. Because it wasn't about Jane at all, it was all about me. <laughs> I thought she was my worst enemy, and everybody convinced she was so mean to me. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's called projection game. All right, next. Okay. Um, I use giving as a way of feeling safe in our relationship. Mm. What are you going to do for something concrete? Uh, got rid of her. Do you have a particular person in mind? Yeah, I got rid of her. <laughs> <laughs> you want another one? Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> I can't walk. She's stepped in the truck. Yeah. We're going out to the river. <laughs> <laughs> it was just too stressful. Uh -huh. you know, but you realize we have to change the dynamic in us. Yeah. Just like if he's rejected, fine, I'm still okay. You know? I don't, I'm, I don't have to give to you to be okay. Yeah. But that has to get so rooted. That's why that little boy inside, you know, who is loved, and that's where having quiet time where you just let God hold you or whatever you need, you know. So, okay. The dreams I have for the future are linked to you. Behavior? Yes. What are you going to do to change that? Um, not sure. Do you to. have a person in mind that where you've linked? Your dreams of the future are hooked to this person? Yes, the last time we had a discussion was about me and my father. Okay. But acting like him. Uh -huh. And you remember that? Yeah, yeah because I was your partner last time. Yeah. Good, excellent. All right. Oh. Uh, my mental attention is focused on pleasing you. Concrete behavior? Please myself or All right, to start becoming Please aware. Yourself. All right, and let's say you do that and the other person is not pleased. It's like over here with Arian. What are you going to do then? I am still okay. Because what's going to hook on inside is the little boy. <gasps> if mom or dad doesn't like us or is, <gasps> okay, that gets hooked on because it's alive in us. And so you, the adults, have got to say, I am still okay. I don't have to please that person. I'm still okay. Ken? Um, glad I circled it so I can find it. Uh, my yeah. mental attention is focused on pleasing you. Um, I think I changed that you to others. Um, and an example video here. I want it to be pleasing to everybody that sees it. Mm -hmm. So I'm concerned about getting on everybody's face and Joe was sitting here blocking my view of somebody. And, you know, I'm going, oh, Joe, why don't you move? He did, <laughs> without me saying anything. So, um, yeah, I, the behavior I'm going to change to do that is, um, is asking God what pleases Him, my higher spirit. No, no not anymore. <laughs> no. Uh, so it's to daily ask my higher power at the beginning of my day. Um, what his will is for me that day and continue doing that during the day yeah. just checking that's in. where the reminders you might want to put that again on your nitroglycerin or on the visor of the car or I've got stuff taped to my you know dashboard okay Klaus your behave is dictated my, uh, by my uh, desire as I feel you are a reflect of me so what's the behavior to change that? Well, just uh, don't, instead of blame on other people, just blame on myself. Mm -hmm. 